All right, so believe it or not, we are going to start getting our project ready for production and then actually putting it into production, making it a live web application. Now for me, this is an exciting process, especially if you've never done it before, because the idea of having your application usable by other people is just so cool. And that's why we do this. We wanna build something that other people can use. Now, before we get there, we need to talk about the two environments that we're working in. One is the development environment. This is what we've been doing so far. And of course, if you look at the code itself, all of it is geared towards development. And one of the key things for it is inside of settings.py is these two security warnings here, but really the secret key and debug. Now it always tells you to turn debug off when in production, but when we're in development, we can absolutely leave it on. But what would be really nice is to have this code set up that we can switch debug on and off at any given time. And perhaps we could also switch other attributes of this application, such as maybe even databases on and off at any given time. And so to do this, we are gonna introduce a concept of the .env file, which is really a way to manage environment variables. Now, if you're not familiar with environment variables, um, what they do is they allow you to inject other kinds of data or settings that maybe you don't want to hard code in something like settings.py. A good example of this is these two key value pairs, right? So this key right here should not be in the code at all, right? So secret keys should be abstracted away, should be taken out of the code. So of course the question is, you know, where do we put that key then? And, and the answer of course is environment variables. So what I want to do here is I want to go ahead and do import OS. And OS is the package that's going to allow us to get our environment variables. And we can just say something like os.environ.get. And I'll go ahead and write out secret key, the exact key value pair, and then give a default value of the original value. And I'm actually going to put these into single quotes like everything else on this settings module. Okay. So this will allow me to grab that secret key, but you're probably wondering, well, how do I set that environment variable? That's of course something I will set in a moment. Next, of course, also os.environ.get, and we wanna get whether or not debug is in there. And in fact, I wanna actually check if it's equal to one or zero, or really just one. So one in Boolean speak is also true. So one is equal to true in this case. Right, so um, what we want to do is I'm putting it in as a string. So if it's anything but a string of one, then it's going to be false, right? So this will always equate to false at this point. So if I leave it right now, what I can see is I can print out the secret key and I can, of course, run my server here. And it's already giving me an error that I must have a setting of allowed host if debug is false. Now, of course, my secret key is showing up and it is the default. So we absolutely need a secret key. So if I type out none here, I'm gonna get a different error and it's gonna be, you must, well, in this case, it's it's also still giving me that one. So let's go ahead and just put true back on for a moment and we'll run it again. And notice that we must have a secret key, okay? So this definitely happens from time to time if you aren't using environment variables correctly, which hopefully I'll show you the exact right way you need. Let's go ahead and bring back that environment variable and let's put the debug item back on. And for allowed hosts, I'm just gonna go ahead and give 127.0.0.1. Of course, that's my local host. I could probably also write out local host. Uh, not to worry, we will absolutely go over these again when we go into production, the allowed host themselves. But now we've changed these three settings on settings.py. Now allowed hosts is really like what domain name do you want to allow this thing to run with, right? So if I run it now, it should be in debug. I should be able to still refresh my page here. Um, but if I go over here, it's now giving me a different not found page, right? So that's because debug is false. It's no longer true. It's no longer giving us that template debug page. And this is actually a lot more secure anyway, which is why they give you the security warning. Now, personally, I would like to see at some point Django having this being false by default and then maybe manage.py run server changes that or something. We'll see that sometime in the future. But for now, what we wanna do is we wanna introduce that .env file. 
So to do this, we wanna go in the root of our project, right next to where manage.py is. That's kind of the key thing here is putting it next to manage.py. So I'm just gonna click out over here, not on any code or anything like that, and add a new file of .env, just like that. We hit enter. Now you're probably not that aware of dot files, but they are incredibly common. And I also have this git ignore file. Now notice that it is gray. This has to do with my version control, the actual thing that's monitoring the code changes, uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But for now, we're just gonna leave it in as .env. So what I wanna do is I wanna take these settings like I have here, at least these two, and put them in this .env. It's really simple. So we just grab the secret key and set that equal to, we'll just say ABC for now. And then debug, I'm gonna go ahead and set that equal to one, okay? So I've now actually set these environment variables accordingly, right? So what I wanna do is I actually want to introduce the dot env. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. Let's close out the server here and I'll do pip install django dash dot env. Now, before you go any further, there is a Python version of this. This is the Django version. There's one called, you know, python-env. The Django one is the one we want. As you would see on the documentation for python.env, I believe it even shows you that. But it also won't work in this fashion. Okay, so now that we've got that installed, let's go ahead and add it into our requirements.txt. So django-env, okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and update manage.py. Now this is actually coming directly from their documentation on how to load in this .env file. That's what we're doing here. That's what this package of .env does. So if I import .env and then inside of this main function here, um, what I wanna do is I actually want to update it right above this settings module here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do dot env dot read dot env and save it just like that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and run that server again. And so remember, I actually put debug at one and then I compared this string here. Okay, so we go back into a not found page and what do you know, debug is now debug. So if I change it to zero and refresh, well, it didn't seem to do anything. So if I rerun the server again, now it'll actually show me that, right? So this .env file, if you do make changes to it, you just have to restart the server. And that's really it. Now, the biggest reason to do this is to get us ready for production. So when I go into production, I actually have different keys or different environment variables that I'll end up using on that production service. The vast majority of production services have a way to inject environment variables, much like we're doing here. So in other words, you won't need to actually add your .env file anywhere. Instead, you'll be setting these key value pairs somewhere on that service, which we'll see on App Platform in just a little bit um, as to how to do that. Now, of course, the next thing of allowed hosts, well, in the case of allowed hosts, we really just wanna have you know, if debug is not true, we want, we're gonna to wanna to add in some different allowed host. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and really simply add into .env allowed host equaling to, let's say just 127.0.0.1, okay? And really now I'll go ahead and say, if not debug, then I'll go ahead and update my allowed host to doing plus equals to os.environ.git and then yet again, we're getting the string of allowed host this time. Granted, I could have more hosts in here, but in this case, I'm just gonna leave it just like that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the allowed hosts in here. So the reason I'm doing this is because when we are in debug mode, it doesn't really care of that much about the host, right? So we can just use the local hosts that we've been using. But once we go into production, it will care about these allowed hosts and we will wanna make changes accordingly. So let's go ahead and restart the server. I'm still in debug mode and I refresh in here. Everything's looking good. Let's go ahead and put it as not debug mode into more of like a production mode and refresh in here. And now I don't have any host errors. 
Um, everything's still running. It's just now not in debug mode anymore. Cool. So now that we've got this, we have a better foundation to what's coming. Now I will say one other aspect that I want to change is inside of manage.py, right? So as it stands right now, .env is just going to try and find a file. It's always gonna try to look for that .env file. Now, if the .env file doesn't exist, what does it do? Let's actually try that out locally. So I'm gonna go ahead and rename this to, I'll just call it b.env. I don't think it will register what that is. So let's go ahead and run the server again. And so now it's just giving us a user warning that it does not exist. It doesn't cause any errors. Um, we have this bad request for good reason, uh, but it doesn't cause any real errors related to the .env file, which I think is actually really good. So that means that our manage.py, I don't actually have to add in additional checks in here for that .env file. But if I were wanting to add in additional checks, what I would do is I would probably use pathlib and then get the dot, you know, env path, and that would be pathlib.path, and then the file name, which is like .env, and then we would say something like if .env exists, then we would read that file, and in fact, we can pass in the actual path to that file. So if you did want to put your .env somewhere else, you could you could actually read it in this way. And so I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this now with that new setup with as back to .env and we'll save it. Let's go ahead and rerun this. And now if I refresh, of course, it actually works again. So it's back to the .env. And if I put it back to zero of debug and refresh the server again, we see that still working. Okay, cool. Um, so what do we actually put inside of this .env file and let me reiterate, it's incredibly important that you do not share this .env file, especially with things like secret keys. But what you also might want to put in here are like maybe your email credentials or your you know API keys, stuff like that. Uh, you would probably want to put in a .env file of some kind and have those specific to the environment you're working in. So at this point, we actually have a better overall environment for our project, but we certainly have to remember we need that .env file if it's not there. And so if it's not there, maybe in here, we can actually add in an else print statement saying no .env found, be sure to make it. Now, of course, you probably recall, uh, this is almost identical to the exact warning that .env gave us. So naturally, I'm just gonna leave that. I don't actually need that path stuff. Um, I will leave it in here for as a comment. So if you did wanna put that path stuff in, you totally can, but I am not gonna use that. Instead, I'll just go off of the package itself. Pretty cool. So if you have any questions on environment variables, when to use them, let me know. Now, the idea is that you don't wanna go crazy with what's going on here, right? So every single setting in here, you definitely do not want to put in environment variables like installed apps. That should probably be hard coded. I tend to use it for keys and sensitive data that might change. So sensitive data being a loud host, that is sensitive data for sure. Now, in the case of debug, I probably would never put that into production, but instead I know that in local, that I need to set it in local. And perhaps I would change the actual key itself for the .env, but I definitely would not put this in production at all. So there's no flag that somebody could use to change whether or not we're in debug mode. I'm actually going to keep it because I actually do want a flag while I'm learning how to go into production the first time. So if we scroll down a bit too, like there's really not a whole lot of other things that I would see inside of settings.py that should actually be in the ENV. You know, potentially the time zone, depending on your hosting service, maybe you want to change the time zone, the default time zone for Django, uh, maybe not. So um, let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, let's go ahead and actually prepare this project to go into production. <laughs>